yet another difference between our time and the previous eras. In bygone generations, the Jews did not feel themselves forsaken and forlorn. They knew full well that they had a father in heaven, the guardian of Israel, who had promised them. And even in Parashat Bechukotai, chapter 26, verse 44, we have another parasha of rebuke, where Kadosh Baruch Hu scares us to death, tells us not to sin, and gives us a very strong warning if we do. But he says to us, despite after all of these things, all of the punishments, the agony, the Holocaust, and so on, he writes that, but despite all of this, while they will be in the land of their enemies, whether it be Nazi Germany or Spain or wherever else, I will not be, I will not have been revolted by them, nor will I have rejected them to obliterate them, to annul my covenant with them, for I am Hashem their God. So Rav Wasserman says this verse is a promise from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not from uh, Yaron Ruven, not from some nothing. No, this is a promise from Hashem that doesn't change. No new religion, no new people, nothing. No matter how much damage we will go through as a people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, yes, I'll punish you at times, I'll rebuke you at times, I'll reward you at times, but no matter what, I'll never leave you. My covenant with you will never change. Even though it looks like it changed, it's never going to change. And Rav Wasserman says throughout all of history, the last 2,000 years of agony and pain, we all knew that no matter what was happening, he's still with us. He's still with us. We felt it. We felt like he's with us. We still saw miracles. We still saw things. But something will change at the time before Mashiach. They knew that they were suffering for their faith in God, and that everlasting life in which nothing in creation can stand within their allotted portion was waiting for them. It says that throughout the past all of the agony and the pain that we went through we knew that no matter what we have this promise. We have this promise in writing from Hashem. We have a promise in writing from Hashem that the Gemara in Masechet Baba Batra says that no matter what, no matter who, no matter where, in Hashem's eyes, no one could be like us. No one could be like Am Yisrael. Where the Gemara says that when Am Yisrael dies for the sake of their belief in God, that's called dying al Kiddush Hashem. Whether it be Rabbi Akiva, that was murdered in an awful way. The Gemara in Masechet Brachot at the end discusses it, and also in other Gemarot, Masechet Gitin and others. Or it'll be the generation of the Holocaust, where many tzaddikim, like Rav Wasserman himself, were murdered for, their, for the sake of their Judaism. Not because they went against the Torah, and then the Goyim decided they are Jews anyway. No! These people defended the Torah while they were alive, while they had the ability, and even when they didn't have the ability. It says, when a person dies because they're Jewish, this is a aruge malchut, and if it's a uh, high level where they are, it could be even dying al kiddush Hashem. Now, when someone dies al kiddush Hashem, or aruge malchut, the Gemara in Baba Kama, page 10b, says that no one can stand next to such a person. What does that mean? So the Gemara says that Rabbi Akiva that got murdered, even before he got murdered, which Imach Shimam, the Romans, took him and literally peeled his skin and then eventually sold his meat in the market. Just a, a, a psychotic people took Kodesh Kodeshim, took a Sefer to land, Murdered them in awful ways. Other sages they murdered in just as awful ways. 
One sage was exceptionally beautiful, so the Caesar's uh, daughter said, uh, I want his skin. So they took his skin while he was alive and put it on the wall, on her wall. Like sick people. Horrible things happened. But these are sages, these are tzaddikim. So the Gemara says, wait a minute, they didn't need to die this way in order to be exceptional that no one can stand next to them. They were already tzaddikim. He says, yeah, but even if you weren't the biggest Talmud Chacham and you died that way, that's what we learned from there. Where do we learn that from? In the, uh, in the Gemara, it says a story of two brothers, Lolianus and Papus, which at their time, the uh, daughter of one of the uh, Caesars was murdered by one of the Goim, somebody else. But of course you have to, without blaming a Jew, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing works. So they sent messages to the Jewish people and they said, if you don't admit who killed her from among you, we're going to kill everybody here. So Lulianus and Papus, two tzaddikim, they knew that the Goim mean business. So what they do? They went to the Caesar and said, we killed your daughter. And they didn't kill her. It was Sadiqim. We, we killed her. So, after they admitted, the Goyim took it, they killed both of them. And the Gemara says that their death, even though they weren't as great as Rabbi Akiva, they weren't as great as any of the other sages that we mention in Shulim on a regular basis, they are in a level in Gan Eden that no one can stand next to them. They're in such a high level. Why? Because they died al Kiddush Hashem. They died al Kiddush Hashem. Now, the commentary called O'Ale Yaakov, page 46b, says that on Yom Kippur, we, one of our prayers is like a song. We say, Adil Venaol, you know, and we also say that Hashem is not only great, but He also is Kovesh Avonot. Kovesh Avonot. He's a conqueror of the sins. So the Oale Yaakov says, What does it mean that Hashem is a conqueror of sins? What does it mean that Hashem is a conqueror of sins? It says, once in a while, the Satan comes to Hashem. And he says, Hashem, you said in your Torah 12 times that a Mechalel Shabbat should get death penalty. You said in your Torah, every time you talk about Shabbat, you talk about homosexuality. He said, that person, also death penalty. On top of that, you said anyone that goes against converts has got a problem with you. At least 36 different problems with you. On top of that, you said that people cheat in business. They give strength to Amalek. On top of that, you said people that don't eat kosher makes them spiritually stupid. And he gives all of the sins. Like he knows everything by heart. He's Chacham. Tamit Chacham the Satan. He knows the whole Torah. So he comes to Hashem with a whole list but not just mentioning the, 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 the sins. Every sin, he puts a name next to it. Name next to it. Name next to it. All the sinners. Look, all your people. This guy, Michal Shabbat. Him, his friend, his cousin, his uncle, his this, his that. They just did uh, this. They just did that. They don't want to come. They don't. This guy is this. This guy is that. And he gives a whole list of the sinners. He says, Hashem, let me at them. It's my job. You told me I'm the Malach Hamavit too. I'm out of work already for a while. I'm going to do something. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, at the time that the Satan, the Malach HaMavit, comes and tries to prosecute against Am Yisrael. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Midrash, or Ale Yaakov says, has a special cloak, has a special clothing that's called Pofira. What is this Pofira? A Porifa, Porifa. This Porifa is a special clothing. Now, obviously, this is a spiritual sense, but I'm a vin yavin. This special clothing has the image 
of every single person that ever died on Kiddush Hashem on it. And at that moment that the Satan comes and tries to prosecute all of Am Yisrael, Hashem looks at that. He says, yeah. What, Mechalet Shabbat? Look at this tzaddik died on Kiddush Hashem for me. Look at this guy. They told him to take off his tzitzit and he died just for not putting on, not to take off his tzitzit. What do you want me, to kill these other people? Look at this guy. They told him to violate Shabbat. He died for that. He died not to violate Shabbat. Look at this guy. He died not to become a Christian. Look at this guy. He died not to become an Arab. Look at, the, look at all these tzaddikim. They all died because they're Jews. Look at those tzaddikim. What do you want me, to kill such tzaddikim? He looks at this. And he says... He's Kovesh Avonot. He Kovesh Avonot. He conquers the sins. It says Kovesh Avonot Lovest Dakot. He conquers sins and he wears righteousness. So the Ali Yaakov says that's what that prayer means. How do you wear righteousness? That's the cloak, the Porifa. He wears the righteous people on him, and that 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 clothing is what conquers the sins. He lets, no, no, give him more time, they'll do tshuva. Give him more time, they'll do tshuva. So now, throughout all of the exile, we had this strong belief in HaKadosh Baruch Hu that he's still with us. But Rav Wasserman says that's another difference between 2,000 years and the last stage before Mashiach. The recognition of this fact did, did much to lighten their burdens. The fact that we knew that Hashem is still with us and that even if we die, we're going to die on Kiddush Hashem. We're dying for being Jewish. We're dying for being Haredim. We're dying for loving Hashem. Even if we die, all that is is just taking off your jacket and going to a uh, different clothing. That's it. A person that is close to Hashem, glued to Hashem, is not scared of death for death itself. Oh, I'm going to miss my family. No, he's not scared of that. Yeah, sure, you love your family, you love your life, but if you're glued to Hashem, you can't wait to complete your mission and go to heaven. Can't wait. So he's not scared of death. So all of the suffering that we went through for the last couple thousand years... We weren't scared of death because we know that if they kill us because we're Jewish, anyway, we're going to heaven. Because we keep Shabbat, we keep Talat Mishpacha, we keep this, we keep that. We're going to heaven anyway. So all you take, you're taking me for a place where I'm working day and night just to pay a mortgage. Working day and night just to eat some, uh, you know, some cheese. Working day and night just to, uh, for, the, for somebody else to steal my money anyway. You're taking me from there to a place where I don't have to work anymore. I can just relax forever. Baruch Hashem, thank you. And on top of that, you, you're killing me because I'm doing it? I'm, I, you actually, you're helping me get to a better level I was able to get by myself. I learned a certain amount of Torah that got me, let's say, level A in, 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 in Gan Eden. But you, because you're killing me because I'm Jewish, now I'm going to get to the highest possible level with Rabbi Akiva, even though I don't even know 1% of the Torah that Rabbi Akiva knew. I'm going to be at the same level of Rabbi Akiva? Oh, Hashem! So for 2,000 years, that understanding, that faith in Hashem, that emunah in Hashem, gave us comfort. That we knew that no matter what, we're going to heaven, we're going to be okay, and because of this, it's actually, you're helping me out, Mr. Nazi. You're going to get punished, you're going to get home, but thank you very much, though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for killing me because I'm a Jew. Thanks. Fantastic. I hope you die tomorrow, and, and, and everybody that's connected to you. But thank you very much, though. Appreciate it, though. Because I'm going to a higher level of heaven because of you. Because you kill me because I'm a Jew. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rabbi Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat